talking to plenty of coaches and general managers as the day progresses. Joining us now, the brand new head coach of the Carolina Panthers, Dave Canales. He must not know us very well. He wouldn't have agreed to do this. Well, no, I mean, he's nice to us right now, too. He's like, wait, these guys aren't that bad. You know? I got a good way to break the ice, though, but oh, it probably would not go Dave, over. Dave. I mean, what? It, we, he's got a bottle of water, and I was going to say, don't throw your water on me. Oh. Too soon? Too soon. <laughs> too soon. Yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, uh, uh, you're funny. All right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyway. I don't really I didn't get say it. it. I was just thinking about it. What do you mean? You don't, don't throw your bottle on me. Okay. Water. See, it just went right over his head. Oh, I got it now. Now you got it. I got it. it. Now I got you got it. it. it I was a late reaction. I wasn't like a boomerang. That. Damn. I'm blonde. Sorry. But I didn't ask that question. I'm just saying that would have been a good icebreaker if I had chosen to ask that question. That's all. But you didn't. I didn't. So we're good. David, how's it feel to be an NFL head coach? Uh, yeah, what am I doing? Uh, tell me where to be. So, <laughs> it's just two years in a row. First year OC last year. Right. Get to the combine. I'm used to my routines, right, as a quarterback's coach yeah. or receiver's coach, pass game coordinator. So OC thing, okay, now you're watching all these guys, and then let's take it a step further. Now you got to start digging into, you know, last night, just a, an evening of pass rushers and linebackers and things. Less. So, you know, really just expanding. I'm a curious guy, so just trying to learn, you know, how to figure out a new position and, and how to really, you know, connect with those coaches and, and players. And it is crazy when you think about it. I'm sorry. No, you're good. Yeah. You, you come to Seattle with Pete, mm. 2010, and you're there in different roles, and yeah. you're working your way up, but it's, it's slow and it's steady, yep. and it just kind of settles in, and then all of a sudden it explodes. Yeah. Did you have any idea that was going to happen? I felt like I felt ready for it to happen for a while. Um, and that was part of me just, you know, being in Seattle, like knowing that maybe five or six years ago, like, OK, when am I going to get my shot? I need to call plays. I need to go do this thing that I feel like I'm really prepared for. Um, nobody's really prepared for anything till you get thrown out there mm. and the clock's ticking and you got to spit it out and you push the wrong you know, button on the side a couple times. So <laughs> had to get all those out of the Where's way. Where's the red flag? Yes. Yeah. So another thing I'm going to have to figure out is how do I. <laughs> How, how do I check out the surface right here and stay engaged with what the defense yeah. is doing and move with the ball? You know, that's going to be a whole different field. Right. Things that I just watch on TV, watch guys do. But um, anyhow, yeah, so it just kind of, I felt ready. I felt ready to take on the challenge, I should say. Um, and then for it to not happen was like, okay, then how can I reframe that to just continue to grow? Let me learn from these guys that, that we have here. Let me pick Pete's brain more about just being ready for this process and, and kind of try to expand my vision and, and scope to be able to, to, you know, have a chance to hit the ground running as much it, as possible. It's, it's interesting because we've seen guys in your position, Ben Johnson, uh, the guy down in Houston, a little bit like, whoa, I've only had one year of play calling. Yeah. I'm not sure if I'm ready to be head coach. But you felt like it was time to jump in and go. Like, when was that moment where you were like, I'm okay, I'm going to go. I'm not worried about being a play caller another year or whatever. Yeah, I think it just goes to a belief in a style, a way to play football. Yeah. And um, like you said it, you know, being with Pete for 14 years, 13 in the NFL, you know, from a structural standpoint, practice plans, uh, off-season plans, you know, to uh, roster improvement, just kind of, you know, and of course with Pete, you know, he was had the final say in a lot of the things that, that was done in Seattle. So he really had to prepare himself that way. So the guys that got to spend that much time with him, I was really kind of learning and growing and grooming myself or what if I got a chance to yeah, make gotcha. final decision? I'll, not, that's not what we're doing in Carolina, but I think that really challenged me to really push what I could see and w what I can learn, you know, about the whole process. So I felt confident about, about the process of it, even though obviously, you know, you, don't, you ain't really ready until you get out there and, and things start happening. Yeah, right. All right, so how do you approach the the quarterback situation? You had this great success with Baker last year, right. slowly <laughs> formulated the offense around him. Now you're with undersized, small Bryce Young, but you got history with Russell Wilson and knowing that similar type of quarterback, right? How yeah. do you kind of view Bryce Young, evaluate him, and like yeah. what he needs to do here going forward? Yeah, so this just takes me back to 2012, you know, and young, young Russ coming in and building an offense, building a defense, a team yeah. that allows Russ to really accentuate the, the talents that he has, you know. And so for me, looking at Bryce, you know, let's play a brand of football that takes the quarterback off the high dive. Kind of stole that from Sean Payton. He said it last year. like the quarterback doesn't need to be, you know, the critical part of every single play. How about right. you just be special three to five times a game? Yeah. You know, how about for the other 95% of the game, you just manage it. You just get us to the right run, get us to the right pass. Right. 
throw it to the first open guy. Right. Life's better that way. Right. You know, and so right. can we get him to playing a brand of football? The run game's a big part of that. Yeah. Play actions, screens, all part of that. Just kind of breather plays for the quarterback. You know, can we build that type of a system for a guy that allows him to just feel like I can do this, you know, and then we can expand it, you know, if it calls for that, you know, then we can expand our game and expand what we do, but um, minimize those, those situations where you put them in that high stress environment. Right. You know, you had so much time working with Pete and now that Pete isn't attached to a team, yeah. how much of a resource has he been for you so far and how much do you expect him to be going forward? I fully expect Pete to be on call. He's on Haleiwa time, though, so that's like six hours that way, you know, so I kind of have to wait till later in the afternoon. Really, after work, at night, 9, 10 p.m., sweet spot, right, for Pete. And so um, for him to be there, just kind of really like, hey, wear me out. You're not bothering me. I'm so fired up for you. I'm, I'm so excited to, you know, and, uh, and really like for him to kind of let me, you know, peek behind the curtain, you know, on some things that yeah. – um, that he was teaching us and things that he said, yeah, this is this is what we talk about from a from a broad standpoint. But here's really the heart of what I was trying to get done with some of these things. Those conversations have been huge. No, that's part of his legacy too. Absolutely. I mean, he's invested in it. He's worked with you. You have the relationship, and this is his name going forward as his coaching tree Absolutely. continues to to flourish. You 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 have any moments like I know you, there's only 32 of these things, right? You went to yeah. a an owner and a team where they fired the coach halfway through the year, yeah. right? Both years, right? Yeah. And I don't know all the reasons behind the scenes or whatever else, yeah. but that as in a position like that you were in, did, did that make you go, oh, wait, do I want to be here? Or is it more like, wait, uh, here's my chance. I got to go. Both. Yeah. Definitely, <laughs> definitely yeah. scary. Good right? answer. Definitely yeah, scary, good answer. But at the same time, like right. I'm 42, you know, I'm not 32. This is not like, Flash in the pan, you know, young wonder kid, you know, whiz, whiz guy who's doing the next, you know, offensive. He's the next offensive guru mind or anything like that. I was like, I was in a spot that learned good football for a long time. So now let me go put these principles into practice. I just felt I felt a readiness to this and for this opportunity to happen, you know, in a division that I know really well. Yeah, right. You know, it's just like then I get a chance to meet Mr. and Mrs. Tepper and, and to feel the, the competitiveness, you know, to feel the passion you know, the, the what's behind it and to go, OK, well, I'm betting on myself, you know, and, and I'm going to take this opportunity and, and, and I'm going to give it everything I have with, you know, with the staff that's in place there and um, and bring some guys so that we can play a brand of football that they're hoping for and expecting. Right. You know, and so um, I kind of liked it, you know, in, in that regard. So, yeah. you know, when you think of it this way, most jobs, Dave, are open for a reason and it's right. not a good one. Right. And the windows open. We talk about that all the time. Yeah. If you defer it a year, who knows? You never know if that window is going to be there again. So that's got to be a huge factor in the final decision. Yeah. So you look at that, right? So it could work two ways for you. One way is you go and have you build on the success in Tampa, and then you have say three or four teams, or it flops on you, and then you don't get enough other opportunity. And I've been around those types of situations where coaches are hot for one second, next sure. thing you know. Just, you know, they're kind of just business as usual, you know, either as coordinators or as position coaches. and Or gone um, like Byron Leftwich. I mean, he went from hot to... Right. Yeah, nowhere. Nowhere. Right. And so, yeah, so it's just for me, it's like there's there's so few opportunities, you know. For me, I'm just, I'm a, I'm a now guy. I'm a, I'm a today. I'm a right now. And um, when I saw this opportunity and I was like, well, this makes it easy for me because it was the only team that actually requested me for an interview for right. a head coaching job. So it was like... All right, let's go win this thing right now because this is the only one I have. So, um, just that kind of approach to it. How about you know you, you talked about you you got to see the you know the Panthers twice a year. You got yeah. to see Bryce twice a year. I know you're coaching your own offense. Yeah. But kind of what? How about your thoughts when you're sitting there on the sideline watching him on the field? Kind of what impressed you? Maybe what he needs to get better at? Yeah. What impressed me about him to start off is just the courage of the guy. Right. So like it would be play before he just gets smoked. Right. You know, very next play. Steps up in the pocket, rips a 15, 20 yard in cut, you yeah. know, under duress. And it was like, and his demeanor was such that like the play before didn't even happen. Right. Um, and then I have to say on the other side of that, like, hey, how about let's not be so courageous at times? Yeah. And he, he does have that mechanism where he'll get rid of the ball, right. you know, but as he's going through his progressions, just the decisiveness, you know, just the, the intelligence of the footwork, marrying with the concept, like just a year two improvement. The basic year two leaps that guys make from their rookie year to their second year, 
I've seen a bunch of coverages. I've seen a bunch of exotic pressures. You know, I've seen what an NFL pass rush looks like, you know, and that being able to build off of that tape, you know, where it's him doing it, you know, it's, um, it's going to be really important for us going forward. But, you know, from, from a, just from, as I got to finish kind of my work and then go and right. watch what was happening there, you know, I just, I just like to take the pressure off of the quarterback to just be a part of what they're doing offensively instead of trying to be a feature of it. Well, that, that leads me kind of my next question, and, and I, I don't want to go backwards, but I do just because I'm interested in it yeah. and I'm learning about you too. Like with Baker, yeah. you know, was there that moment last year? Because you guys kind of started off good, then you went through this lull. Yeah. Baker made a comment like, I think we got to stop, you know, trying to play through the run game or whatever. Yeah. And it felt like the offense kind of took off from there. Yeah. Right. But what in your eyes was it for him and you guys or whatever that kind of got, you know, the ship straight there in Tampa? Yeah, I think we kind of, uh, I think we won a few games early on just off of a few big plays. We weren't really good at football. Right. That showed up midseason. Yeah. We weren't really good at football and we weren't that much better than the teams we were playing. And we weren't better than some teams. You know, like when you have Mike, you have somebody who's better than whoever he goes against one on one. Right. Pretty much every play. So we knew teams had to do stuff to try to, try to you know, affect him. Um, but, you know, as we went through that middle part of it, like we never gave up on the run game. Yeah. Regardless of what Baker's frustrations might have been, I didn't care. I knew what we needed to do to win the division, to try to give us success, to see if we can win a playoff game or two and see what, see what happens from there. Yeah, you right, know? And so right. I knew the run game was going to be a part of that. We saw a 20-yard difference from the first half of the season average to the second half of the season. So it was about being steady. It was about being committed to improving fundamentally. It was that 1-0 and mentality, a chance to win the division. Guys, can we not block out all the external stories happening right now? Right. Can we just make it about this combo on the backside of the run? We got to make this happen so that this plays. Can we flip the protection on this look? Because that's going to allow us. So we really just fully committed to like yeah. this, the incremental, the, fundamental. The nuances. Absolutely. Yeah, right. And then I will say, this was a quarterback competition in training camp. Yeah. It was Kyle Trask. It was Baker Mayfield. We were splitting the reps. Mm. We got Baker all the reps he needed in the beginning of the season. And then through that middle part, we really started to fine tune the pass game towards Baker's strength. Okay. And our guys. Right. And that's when we started to really find our groove and see. Okay. That's where I was, I was interested. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Sorry. Tuning. It took me so it's long one, to get to but, that. But, <laughs> it's no, one of the drawbacks of having a quarterback great. competition. Yeah. You're taking away reps. We yeah. say that all the time yeah. from the guy who's ultimately going to be the starter. Right. Those reps that go to the other guy could have gone to him. All right. right. We two years, two years in a row. Yeah, so, two years in a Dave, row. That's right. We appreciate you very much. We wish you all the best in Carolina. Congratulations on your success. Dump some water on him anytime you and, want. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be back. And, and he, don't let him get that bottle because he'll do it. We'll be back with more PFT Live right after this. Hey, thank you. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.